We are on page three of 1.5 notes. So page three. As a review yesterday, we talked about congruent angles. Congruent angles have the same measure. So knowing that, we're going to look at our example. We've got this beautiful looking quilt. Someone said, you know what, I have all these scraps of designs that look nothing alike, and I'm just going to throw it in a quilt. Um, we've got some um, quadrilaterals um, cut out into it. We're going to identify the congruent angles labeled in the quilt design. So you want to think back to when we had segments. Um, which of these segments would have been congruent? The first and the last, because they had one tick mark apiece, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at this quilt, you should see arcs instead, right? Um, the number of arcs should match up. So one arc and one arc will be congruent, two arcs and two arcs will be congruent. Okay, that's how they signify it. So knowing that, we are going to identify the congruent ang angles. So we can start with this one because I want to. Uh, we can name this a lot of things. What do we want to name it? We, we could say H, G, F. We could say F, G, H. But there is one other way to name it. Angle G, because there's only one angle at G. Here's what I mean by one angle. There's not a G and then two angles sitting there. Okay, just one angle. So angle G has one arc, so it's going to be congruent to the angle in the other polygon with one arc. So this one, we can name it a lot of things. What do we want to name it? Angle B. Again, we could have named it A, B, C, C, B, A, but we're going to call it angle B because we can. All right, and then the last, the angles with two arcs. So we've got this one. We could say angle angle F is going to be congruent to angle D. I am going to circle it and box it in. All right, so the measure of angle ADC, remember this little M means measure. So if the measure of angle ADC so we're going to figure out which angle here is ADC. What is the vertex of ADC, if it's written in that order? D is the vertex. So vertex means it's the corner of the angle. So whenever you name an angle, you name it like you're drawing it, ADC. So D is the vertex. D is the corner of the angle. So we're talking about this angle. It has two arcs. So if it is 140 degrees, we're going to find the other angle that... Well, it actually names it EFG. EFG also has two arcs. So if the measure of ADC is 140, what's the measure of EFG? 140. 140. So you are going to write it measure of angle EFG is 140. So we're going to... Just no doubt. We're going to go in an odd order. We were supposed to finish more yesterday than we did. Um, so we're going to go to page 5, and then we'll come back to this page. So page 5, you should see a protractor. It looks like this. You, this is the question from your homework, actually. So what I did, we're not doing 11 and 12, so you can put X's over those. We're not doing 11 or 12. And then I changed number 10. Because your homework, this is the literal picture from your homework, you're asked to do 10 through 12. So for our classwork, I'm going to do one similar to the question on your homework, but not the exact same question from your homework. So we're going to use this protractor. It says find the angle measure, then classify the angle. We can start with AOC, so from A to O to C. So there's only two angles in this. You can highlight it if you want to. Um, AOC, are one of these rays sitting at zero? Yes. Which row is it sitting on, the top or the bottom? The top. Okay. So if I'm reading zero on the top row, I need to read 30 
on the top row for the other ray. So how many degrees is AOC? 30, which is what classification of an angle? Acute. It's so cute. All right, and then we're going to do COE. So you should have changed it. COE. Do we want to read the top or the bottom? Sure. We could read the bottom. So we got 150 and 40. Since neither of them are sitting at zero, what do I do? I'm going to subtract. 150 minus 40 equals 110, which is obtuse. So students asked yesterday, how do I know which row to use? It actually doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Um, like this angle that we just did, what is the angle sitting at if you're reading the top row? 30, which means you'd read the top row over here, which is 140. You would still subtract 140 minus 30 is still 110. So either row you had read, you have gotten the same answer. Um, as long as you read the same row for each ray. Okay, this next section, here's what I want you to do first on your paper. First thing, if you can't see all of the arcs, um, I would outline them in your pencil so you can see them. On my screen especially, the yellow and the white is not very visible. Then the second thing I would do, you're going to have this on your paper, but because I'm doing, there's a lot of colors and a lot of everything, um, I'm going to write it and then erase it. Um, we're going to use this information at the top. It says the measure of angle AED is 34. What is the vertex of AED? E is the vertex. So that means it's the corner of the angle, AED. That means we're talking about this angle. So it's 34 degrees. So how many other angles in this picture are 34 degrees? There are four total angles. There's three other. So you both answered kind of differently. So there are three other angles that have the measure of 34 degrees. So what I would do on your paper is go ahead and mark them. So all of the ones with one arc will be 34 degrees. I can't keep it on the screen because there's just going to be a lot going on and it just would be too much. The other one it says, and the measure of EAD, what is the vertex of EAD? A is the vertex, that means it's the corner. So EAD is this angle, EAD. So all of the angles with two arcs are 112 degrees. So there's this angle, the middle angle and then this angle. All are 112 degrees. So I would write that in because I am going to erase it. Because there's just a lot going on right now and it's too much. So from that we're going to answer the questions. So it says identify the angles congruent to AED. So A E, D is this angle. It is the one that is one arc. It's the 34 degree angle. So we're going to list all of the angles with one arc. Okay. So we can start with this angle has one arc. Can I name it angle D? I cannot. Why can I not name it angle D? There's multiple angles at D. There's this one that we have highlighted. There's the top one, and then there's the one opening to the right. So there's too many. You have to name with three letters. Okay, so we could say angle ADE, or we could say angle EDA. Okay, either option would work. Would work. So that's the first one. We're going to name this angle as well. It also has the vertex of point D, but it's we can't name it angle D. So what can we name it? BDC. Sure, angle BDC, same as CDB, BDC, CDB, same thing. And then last, 
We can say B, C, D. What else can we say? D, C, B. What else could we say? We could say angle C. So any of those would work because there's only one angle at C. So any of the above that we just said would work. All right. Then we move on to the next question. Identify the angles congruent to E, A, D. E, A, D. A is the vertex. So we're naming all of the angles that have two arcs because they will be congruent to each other. We can start with this middle angle. Good. Angle A, D, B. A, D, B. You could have also said B, D, A. We've got one more. I heard a lot of letters. D, B, C is one option. C, B, D is another option. And angle B is the other option. Any of the above would have been correct. So D, B, C, C, B, D, or just angle B. Because there's only one angle at point B. All right, so this next portion, it says find. What does this little M mean? The measure. So what is my answer going to look like? A number. So you should already have these all written out. I know I erased mine on my screen, but you have them on your paper. So we're finding B, D, C. So when we are looking at this angle, B, D, C, the vertex is D. It has one arc. So how many degrees was this angle? 34. All right, and then we could do the last one, A, D, B. A, D, B. I don't even know if you can see that. A, D, B. Nope. It's this middle one. A, D, B. It has two arcs. So what is the measure of A, D, B going to be? 112. Perfect. Okay, now we move back to page three. So basically what was supposed to happen, we were supposed to finish page three and then go in a little bit into page four, and then we were going to review today all that we just did. So that's why it's in an awkward order. Um, we are going to look at the bottom of page three. We're going to fill that out. You actually kind of already know how to do this. This is called the angle addition postulate. It is the same as the segment addition postulate. So when we had a segment, let's say it was 20, and you had one piece was eight, what was the length of the other piece? 12, because eight plus 12 is 20. It will be the same exact thing, but with angles. It's okay. So if this top angle, it's not, but let's pretend it was 8 degrees, and this bottom angle was 12 degrees, what would the measure of the whole angle be? 20, 20 degrees. It's the same property. Okay? So here is what we are going to put in the blink. If point P is in the interior of angle RST, so that is the first blink. If point P is in the interior of angle RST, then the measure of angle RSP and the measure of angle PST equal the measure of angle RST. And I will explain it to you. Because that was a lot of letters. So, if our first angle was 36 degrees, and PST, the bottom angle, was 38. How would I find RST, the outer angle? I would add them together, which would make 74 degrees. That is the property, okay? Um, when I taught this, so in other schools, this is actually a ninth grade class. I'm just letting you know. Um, when I taught this in other schools, I said the inner angle plus the inner angle equals the outer angle. If you struggle with math, I would write it down. I'm just saying. The inner angle plus the inner angle will equal the outer angle. You think now that you get it and that makes sense? We are going to add algebra into it. So if you're not confident in with algebra, I would write this down. The inner angle plus the inner angle will equal the outer angle. Okay, so we're going to use that here. So you're going to flip. I believe it is on the direct next page, yeah? yeah. So no. Am I? No. Okay. 
We're going to find the measure of angle JKL. That is our goal. So find the measure of JKL. That is the outer angle. I have this piece, which is 31, and this piece, which is 85. So what am I going to do in order to find the outer angle? Add them. Good. So add the 31 plus the 85. When you answer, you do need to actually write out the measure of angle, what is it, JKL equals, what is 31 plus 85? 116. So the inner angle plus the inner angle added together equaled the outer angle. Okay, um, what was something else? That you do need to write your work. When I say show work on these types of problems, just show me what you added or subtracted. Um, so that I can, let's say you just, you thought A plus 3 was 10 and you put 106. I would take off one point for your math error, but you did the process correctly. Does that make sense? So make sure you write what you're adding. This next one, I want you to take your highlighter. Because I'm going to guarantee you the part that students struggle the most in this section is reading the directions. Everyone looks at the picture and forgets about the directions, but some of the information we need to solve the problem is in the directions. So I would highlight this portion. The measure of angle RSU is 91 degrees. We cannot solve the, the problem without knowing that. So if the, me the measure of angle RSU is 91 degrees... I had a lot of students writing it kind of on the outside so you would know. The outer angle is 91 degrees. One of the inner angles is 69. We are missing a piece of the 91 degrees. So how do I find out what the missing piece is? I'm going to subtract. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Yep, we just subtract. So we take 91 minus 69. So then... Again, you're going to say the measure of angle what is it, RST equals 22 degrees. And then box your answer. We feeling good? Dead silence. Awesome. One and two. So this is um, a similar problem, the same thing, um, except for... The numbers are written in the directions and not in the picture at all. So we're going to have to take from the directions and plug them in. I see it. This was created um, like years ago. So, But yeah. So we're finding the measure of KLM. The measure of KLB is 20, what do we say, 26. The measure of BLM. Is 60? Why did we put 26? Why did we put 26? It says it in the directions. I can even see what the, I only see the BLM. Well, yeah, but you have the directions on your paper, don't you? Yeah, I wasn't paying attention. I see that. So we're finding the measure of KLM. What do we have to do here? Add 26 plus 60 makes 86 degrees. All right, the second one, we're finding the measure of FGH. The measure of angle FGB is 105. And the measure of BGH is 54. So what are we going to do to find the measure of angle FGH? Add them. 105 plus 54. 159. Perfect. Okay, so this is where we're going to add algebra. We'll go to the next available page that we haven't already filled in. I think that's page 6 maybe. maybe. We are going to do these two problems a different day because I feel like it's very repetitive. We've already done it. We're going to move on to algebra. So this is where if you have colors to highlight, I highly recommend 10 out of 10. I'm going to color coat the first thing I want you to highlight is something in the directions. It says, given that the measure of angle LKM is 145 degrees, that is crucial information. 
If you did not have that, you would not solve this problem, no matter how good you are at math or geometry. It's not happening. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to write it the geometric way. Like if Ms. Westcott were teaching this class, this is how geometry teacher would normally write it. Okay, we didn't do it on the first problems because we were just adding and subtracting and it was super, super simple. Here we've got algebra. So I'm going to say we're going to take the measure of angle LKM. So with one color, I highlighted the angle. I'm going to find the measure of LKM. I'm going to add it to the measure of angle MKN. And then no equation is complete without an equal sign, right? What will these two add up to equal? Yeah, the measure of angle LKN which I will plug in next, yes. So I wrote it this way. Remember earlier, if you struggle with math, I took the inner angle, which is highlighted in green. I added it to the other inner angle, which is highlighted in purple. And then they equal the outer angle, which is in red. Okay, that's what we're doing here. So according to this picture, what is the measure of angle LKM? 2x plus 10. And the measure of MKN, 4x minus 3. And then last, the measure of LKN, 145. So this is where I see the most math error from here. The x's are on the same side, correct? You're going to combine them. They're on the same side. They're friends. You're going to 2x plus 4x. You take 2x plus 4x, which makes 6x. The only time you do the opposite action is when you're going to the opposite side of the equal sign. If they're on the same side, you do exactly what it says. Like with our plus 10 minus 3, 10 minus 3 is 7, positive 7. The only time you do the opposite action is when you're moving something across the equal sign. Like I want 6x by itself, so I need to move the positive 7. So I'm going to subtract 7 on both sides because I'm moving it across the equal sign. That is the only time you do the opposite. So we got 6x. What is 145 minus 7? 138. Good. Divide by 6. It is 23. Do we circle it? No. It didn't ask what x was, but it did ask to find the measure of angle LKM. Ooh. LKM. I'm working on it. And find the measure of angle MKN. So what do I have to do with x? I'm going to plug it in. So 2 times 23 plus 10. 2 times 23 is? Well, first. It's 46, and then plus 10 is 56. So the measure of LKM is 56 degrees. The measure of MKN, we got 4 times 23, which is, sorry, which is 92, minus 3 is 89. What is a good way to check my work? I'm going to add them. I've already plugged them in. So I'm going to add them. What should these two add up to? 145, and they do. Good. These next two questions, they got shoved to the bottom of the paper instead of you having extra room. So there were there are two things that I've seen students do with these two questions. I think that, so number one, you're one page away from being done. So you could use the blank. Or I've seen uh, people just pull up the page and do the work on the page before. So you pick which one you would rather do. Um, I'm not going to wait for you to draw it. So if you're wanting to draw it, I would do it after. Okay. But we're going to do the same exact thing. 
We're going to read the directions and then go from there. It says, given that angle KLM is a straight angle, I want you to highlight that too because that's super important. What does a straight angle tell me? Yeah, the outer angle is 180 degrees. KLM is 180. So, um, again, I've seen students write it out here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the inner angles. So the measure of angle KLN. Add it with my other inner angle, NLM. They will equal the measure of the outer, KLM. So from here we're going to plug in. What is the measure of KLN? 10x, yep, minus 5. The measure of NLM? And the measure of angle KLM? 180. All right, so from here, we're going to combine like terms. So 10x and 4x are on the same side, and they will add up to? 14x, are you keeping it? Are you trying to check it from here? No. Okay. I appreciate it. 10x with 4x, sorry, we said 14x. Um, minus 5 plus 3 is negative 2. All right, so I want 14x all by itself. So how do I move that negative 2? Add it to both sides. So 14x equals 182 divided by 14. x equals 13. So we are going to plug it in. Ten times thirteen is one hundred thirty. Minus five is one twenty-five. All right, the last one four times thirteen is fifty-two. Plus three is fifty-five. Sorry that my degree symbol looks awful, but it is what it is. What should these two add up to? Yes, but what should they add up together to 180? Okay, to 180. This last one is a smidge different than what you'd see in your textbook, and I'll explain why. Do you see how in the directions it says... Given that EFG is a right angle, it's not going to say that in your textbook. It's going to assume that you know that EFG, let me make this smaller. It's going to assume that you know that EFG is a right angle. And why would it assume that you know that? Because of what? There's the box. That's the main thing. That tells you it's a right angle. Okay? So, this little arrow, if you see it, this arrow is just pointing to this angle. It couldn't fit it super close. Like these are pretty close to being wedged in the corner. This one couldn't be, so there's a little, little angle, a little arrow. So we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. The measure of angle. This is the last one, if that makes you, makes your heart sing. The measure of angle EFH. Plus the measure of angle HFG. Equals the measure of angle EFG. So the inner plus the inner equals the outer. 
What is the measure of angle EFH? 2x plus 2. And the measure of angle HFG? And then the last one is 90. So combine like terms, 2x plus x makes 3x. 2 plus 1 is 3. I want 3x by itself, so how do I move that positive 3? Subtract it. So 3x equals 87. Divide by 3 and x equals 29. I'm sorry that they're loud. Are we ready to plug them in? Okay. So we're going to find the measure of angle EFH first. So 2 times 29 is 58, plus 2 is 60. And then the measure of angle HFG is 29 plus 1, which is 30. So these two very obviously add up to 90. 60 plus 30 is 90. Um, but you can always check yourself. Why wouldn't you just, like I've had some students who were like, well, if I found out this was 60, why don't I just subtract 60 from 90? Can you guess why that wouldn't always be the best option? Your answer might be wrong. So if you were wrong, yeah, I thought that's what you said. Your answer might be wrong. So if your answer was wrong and all you did was subtract, then now you're doubly wrong. Whereas... If you plug it into both and they don't add up to 90, what would that tell you? That you were wrong, you need to go backwards, okay? So, this is where we end. You're going to take out a sheet of paper.